find your seats if you haven't done. Excellent. Great to see so many of you here. Really excited. Uh, with obviously, there's a lot of energy and passion around at the moment. So this is Paul Newman from Juice Architects. Right. Good afternoon. Can you hear me without this? Not really. No. There's some echo. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. I'll try and talk quietly with the microphone. Um, good afternoon and thank you very much for coming and inviting me and for Steve and Sean to invite me to come uh, and meet you today, this afternoon. I'm glad to say it's very sunny, living up to the reputation. The sunniest uh, town, I believe, in the United Kingdom. And that's something I'm going to touch on in a minute. Um, I'm a bit worried because there are two gentlemen at the back um, who followed me from the car park. <laughs> and when I came in here, they were here already. Uh, <laughs> So if I, if I leave quite quickly with them, uh, I've done something that I have not realised I have done, so I apologise for that. I will try and continue. Um, the other thing I'm going to apologise is you'll see some very wide people in Folkestone on some of my images. Um, that's not our comment on uh, people in Folkestone, but it's a technological problem. This is projecting as a wide screen. Uh, we've developed our images on a normal laptop screen. So I apologise that everything will be slightly wider than it should be in reality. Um, so if I could just touch on, I, I did get a call uh, some while ago from Sean McGuinness, um, completely out of the blue, we were in the studio, the phone rang, uh, one of my architects said, oh, there's a call from a guy from uh, Sean McGuinness, he wants to talk to you about Swansea and the Tidal Lagoon, which we're responsible for. And I thought, oh, it's somebody from the Middle East, they want something very exotic. They've seen the images, and this is it, we're off. Well, here we are in Bognor Regis. <laughs> and I'm equally as proud and pleased to be here as I would be anywhere else in the world. The reason I say that is, the reason I came to see Sean and then uh, Steve and his house was Sean's immediate passion about what he wanted to do. Um, and he simply said, and I'm inferred, that he has a passion for Bognor Regis and its future generations. Now that second bit was very important to me because when you do develop, when you do look at towns, sometimes there is a short-term idea and benefit and there isn't a long-term and community input that really makes the difference for those future generations. And it's really about sustainability. Um, and that's why I became more involved with Sean and Steve I really didn't know who they were, what they were doing, but I liked what they were thinking about. Um, we've been working for them some, some time, but more importantly, probably only over the last few weeks, when I've been trying to give them some guidance on how perhaps they can take this forward. I think we have to put this into context. This is simply a, a catalytic step forward on the potential of what could happen in Bognor Regis. And part of that process is because Aaron District Council um, have obviously asked for expressions of interest for what might happen on the Regis Centre and the Hofhampton car park site. At that moment in time, it was when um, original ideas that St Modwin had put forward, which were of its time very good, have fallen foul of financial crisis and everything. So I don't think anybody can blame anybody for having an idea and then falling foul of that. But it does give a new opportunity to perhaps look at a fresh of what the Regis Centre and the Hofhampton site could actually do. So what I want to do with uh, you today, this afternoon, is to share our thoughts and our ideas. These are by no means fixed in terms of the physicality of what I'm going to show you, but I'd like you to think really hard about what I'm going to suggest about what you could potentially do and the values behind that as well. Um, and the first slide you have is one that we've found, um, we borrowed it from a blog um, in um, Bognor Regis, but it seemed to sum up what I think Bognor Regis really could be about and is about. It's about the beach, it's about people having leisure time, doing various activities and also enjoying life as well. And that's probably the unique asset Bognor Regis has, its sea and its sun, as, as, as Sean has said. Um, I'm just going to very quickly go through um, some slides because we want to put these sites into context with Bogs and Regions. Obviously you have the Regis Centre, which is probably the jewel of the crown, the most important site, and then you have the Hofhampton car park site to the north. 
But as I said, the most important thing you probably got is what I call the seascape. The element in front of the Regis and the whole esplanade. That is your real jewel. And that's something for future generations we should think about transforming for the better to make Bognor Regis the preeminent town it has been and should be and could be in the future. At the other sites that one has to consider is of the railway station and the site around it, the pier, which is clear, <coughs> excuse me, very important. And there are other sites, there is the old um, car park site, um, but just in front of Butlins. And obviously Buttons, um, who are very kindly allowed us to, to use their facilities, are incredibly important to Bognor Regis. Um, they are key employer, they attract people into town. It's a relationship between Bognor and the town that we want to build on as well. Um, well I'm going to talk about the Regis Centre site, because I think that is probably the preeminent site of the two. I'm not saying the Hopehampton site is not important, but I think the Regis site is the really key one. And to my mind, if we can actually create a destination on the Regis Centre site, that then starts to drive footfall from perhaps the railway station or through the town, and there's a very strong connection. Now, there has been improvements in terms of the key retail area, the retail quarter, and if we can create a destination that brings people down to the seafront, then it makes that attraction much stronger, <coughs> excuse me, and enhances the town's vitality and viability. That will obviously, in its own time, start to re regenerate and improve the air around it. Um, what I'm going to be showing you is a vision for possibly 20 or 30 years' time. But I want to say and show you how perhaps the Regis Centre and Hofhampton site developments can be catalytic to the regeneration of the town and also can kickstart perhaps that greater vision. The Hofhampton site obviously is important and there is a tenuous link between it, the pier, the leisure gardens, the Waterloo gardens uh, and also the railway station which needs to be considered. But I'm going to go back to this seascape because this is the driver to my mind, your biggest asset and what we should be doing with it. And it's not just the esplanade, it's the zone within the water. Now, um, when Sean talked to me about can we have a lagoon like you have in Swansea, well, you could do, but it's not probably going to be economic. But that doesn't mean that actually the water shouldn't be forgotten about. But for the regeneration, what I want to do is not go three and a half kilometres out into the sea where our visitor centre is, but talk about the first few hundred metres of the sea, which is access to people, and people will use it as a leisure opportunity. Um, the heyday of the Victorian period, Bognor Regis was obviously a very important town to come to and enjoy, and it was preeminent. Today, and again, we borrowed the photograph, the colour photograph from the blog, the beach, without a doubt, is the key. But what you'll see with the Victorians, they're incredibly inventive, <coughs> excuse me, and they actually inhabited the sea with the bathing huts and everything. I have no problem out going into the water and enjoying it. <coughs> so in that respect, I want to sort of take a vision that goes that way as well. So, a leap of faith, Bognor Regis in 30 years' time. We've now got a preeminent seaside town on the south coast, and it's had a mixture of various elements. On the left, number five and number six, it's a possibility of having a new cold reef out of town with an extension of the pier. Now, I don't know if there's anybody from the Pier Trust here, you haven't seen this before, so don't shoot me down. But it seems to me that if in years to come, cold water reef could be created, it would act as two things. It would create for sailing, for dinghy sailing for families, a calm air of water. There's a possibility of having a couple of pontoons for a stopover marina. Sean mentioned that a lot of people have boats in Chichester, they have lots of boats in Brighton. <coughs> they don't really sort of have very where to go. But a folk at Bognor Regis could be a, a, pop, a pit stop on the way and be an attractive destination in its own right. Um, there are other opportunities, obviously, all the activities on the water as well, with jet skis, with boats and everything. It could become a lot more active than it is at the moment. And possibly, as Bournemouth did, create an underwater reef, um, which then creates a surf to attract surfers as well at the same time. <coughs> the beach itself, um, you notice down the coast at Elmer, the sea defences where cusps have been created and the lateral tide has then created on bowlers of safe beaches. <coughs> there is an opportunity that we can do that as well on the frontage all the way along the Esplanade and create safer beaches for people to swim on, more sand, etc. Uh, for beach ball, 
Uh, and you'll see at number uh, two, the suggestion that we can actually create some rock pools which will be refreshed at high tide, but be safe places to swim and also for children to uh, explore it. And while creating that beach, I know there's certain uh, quite infamous person in here about music. There's opportunity of creating perhaps some music contests actually on that beach and really make the frontage the key focal point. Um, now, it's not a flight of fantasy. As you know, down the coast or up the coast at Elma, uh, eight cusps already been built with tombolas purely for sea defences, but they make very attractive uh, beaches. And very cheekily, what we've done on that bottom right hand image is we've taken from Google the aerial photograph of Elma, put it over Folkestone. Now we've stretched it and not increased it in size, but we've actually adjusted the lines that fits along the Esplanade. So you can see here we've got Elma actually on Folkestone, uh, 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 sorry, on Folkestone, <laughs> Bognor Regis. Um, and also, the, here's an example in the Basque Country in Spain of where they built um, protective uh, defences but also operate limpets. Now, limpets are a way of actually creating wave power and generating pressure that drives turbines, which are actually in this location. And there's a possibility of looking at that, but that needs to go through a lot of technological proving. Um, and the top photograph you'll recognise is Elman. Um, so, let's talk, put this sort of into reality. Now, I did mention that um, trying to make a destination, it's not just about water sports, because in October, on a Thursday afternoon, when it's not quite, <coughs> not quite so warm, obviously you're not going to have many people actually in the sea. But I think there's a huge element within Bogner Regis, which is heritage, which goes beyond just the leisure. So the importance to me is to consider how the heritage and the leisure activity itself can become a destination. Now, at the moment on the Regis Centre, there is the Alexander Theatre. I strongly believe that this site, the Regis Centre, for the beach, should be the place for a new multicultural, multi-use facility that can accommodate the Alexander Theatre. It can accommodate community studios and places for dancers for bands. And I've also, we've also talked about the idea that this also could become the new home for the Blake's Gallery which is a celebration of William Blake. Now this picks up on the heritage and starts to suggest we could create what we call a cultural tourism, where people will come to Bognor Regis, not only for the sun and the sand, <coughs> excuse me, we don't get a drink, you know. Lots of vodka. <laughs> That's better. Um, uh, we can get the cultural tourism into Bognor Regis, then it stretches the season, it stretches the interest and makes it a lot of interest. So here you see an aerial photograph with the beer, pier being extended onto the uh, old water reef, the marina. But then in the middle, we've got the cultural centre, we've got the rock pools, and then we've got residential and a hotel. Now make no objection in uh, or, or uh, appeal to you in the sense that this is commercially driven. This is actually driven from a reality in commercialism. To get certain elements to work, they have to be paid for. We can't just put uh, a, a theatre and a gallery and some rock pools in the Regis Centre unless you can find a philanthropist who's going to pay for that. And also we need to have a mixed use centre. So the proposal here is on the left, bottom left is the multi-use complex, which could have the Alexander Theatre, we can have all the community studios, and also it could be the home for the Blake's Gallery. It could have a sculptural garden on the top, and it could have a ramp that leads up to the top for people to have a view, <coughs> viewing gallery of the centre itself. The front area here is the public realm area, which connects uh, back, into the high, uh, back up to the town, past the gallery, and out to this new rock pool and cluster. And the idea of this works then as a cultural and a leisure attraction at the same time. And beyond that, we have residential, and behind that, a hotel as well. Now, there's a hotel on site at the moment. It's important to consider people on site <coughs> and what they can produce in terms of value. And there is an interest, obviously, of bringing the hotel onto site. So, we're now looking at a panoramic sketch, if you like, <coughs> of the centre. We've got the sea to the right, the rock pools, the new Blake's Gallery, um, and rather cheesily, we've chosen Jerusalem 
uh, as being probably the most important po English poem um, that I can think of anyway, uh, attributed to Blake, uh, which could perhaps be as a monument to his work on the cornerstone. We've got also public arena areas where people can have impromptu concerts, they can have drama, <coughs> dance, etc. And the idea is to actually make this very much a public realm where the public can enjoy the place and be part of it, and not feel as a barrier or a threshold. A uh, longer distant view um, from a helicopter looking back down at the rock pools. As I say, these would be refreshed at high tides, so they clean through, they provide safe, safe, uh, safe bathing and also possible areas for children to uh, search. And along the bottom uh, of the re uh, residential, those arches, there's an opportunity because we've got car parking. Uh, it's good to screen that. It's, it's functional but not very attractive. The idea that we can have a row of starter units or craft workshops that sit on the front. They might get locked up at winter. Some of them might be surf um, uh, surfboards for hire or repair. They might be ice cream shops. Um, seaside towns are infamous for ice cream. You can get, I mean, I used to sell ice cream when I was a student. It wasn't very good ice cream. I wasn't a very good seller. I became an architect. Um, but it's not to say people can't make their own ice cream, organic ice cream, so that also strata can work. <coughs> And then the view from the town looking out to the sea to get your bearings, that's the rock pools immediately there. And this could be the new entrance to the multicultural, multifunctional uh, centre. Might be the entrance to the Alexander Theatre, which could be within there. <coughs> but it's an open gallery. And there's a suggestion here that this could be a ramp that then takes you up onto the roof. So people could walk up on the roof and get a nice view of the sea, but also there might be a sculptural gallery there. And of course, night time, you know, it's quite possible that we could have uh, pop-up cinemas at night time or theatres <coughs> for people to enjoy, uh, enjoy as well. Uh, and then finally, the Northampton site. As I said, it is an important contributor to the regeneration of the site. Um, might cause a few whistles and, and, and wails here at the moment, but um, the two options that we've shown, we've looked at Sarah's, <coughs> the first one on the left, is for a retail or food retail store, and there is interest uh, in Bogner for that, with residential that sits over it and also on the corner. Um, that works perfectly well. Um, the other one, and I'm going to get shot down in flames here, is for a leisure unit which could include a multiplex. Now, I know there's a lot of people who do not like the idea of a multiplex. I haven't heard anybody who likes the idea of a multiplex. But I've worked on lots of contentious projects, and a lot of people say they don't like things, and hardly anybody says they does. <coughs> they do. So there's no fixed ideas on that to site other than it can contribute to going towards the regeneration and sparking of that. And as I said, what I'm showing here is an idea, and hopefully helps you think about what you can do and what should happen, uh, particularly about the values, <coughs> less about the physicality. Um, my view is I'm completely open to any thoughts about whether there should be a multiplex or not. That shouldn't be the driving force behind the regeneration, whether it's there or not. But it should be air this debate. And the, if the view is that it shouldn't be here, and it doesn't go here, there are plenty of other options for that site we can go forward. Um, so I'm going to uh, sit down now. My voice is going. I'm sorry about that. I feel like somebody's just about to fail on X Factor. Um, so before I do, I'm going to sit down and hopefully uh, answer some of your queries. Thank you.